Guys, welcome back to this week's episode. We're actually checking out another building here in Midtown, just a two bedroom, but it has some history behind it that I want you guys to know about. And it actually has to do with a lot of the city in general and what really started the kind of boom that we're seeing in the Midtown area right now. These were the kind of precursors to that. And I want you guys to know about it. So we're actually just touring a two bedroom here in Plaza Midtown. It's a great building in and of itself, as far as just talking about other buildings go. Um, Great building, great amenities, and a fantastic two bedroom. But I want to kind of talk about the history of this building because it is oh, oh, so important to what we see today. And if you're new to the Midtown area, you probably don't know this. And I didn't know too much about this either until I talked to one of the neighbors in the building. He gave me this whole lesson and shout out to you. I don't want to say his name here. I just blasted out on YouTube, but it was, it was just a fantastic kind of lesson to learn about what actually started Midtown going. And so if you've watched my last video, you actually know that I kind of talked about a lot of things kind of blowing up around the like 2018 period period, really like 2016 on to now, where things really kind of got this intense wildfire effect. But there was a kind of previous smaller scale wildfire that kind of happened in the early 2000s, around the kind of 2008 and before that period. And it all started with Plaza Midtown and Metropolis. Metropolis started it all. Metropolis was this huge development where they took out a lot of the, they took out basically an entire block and put this massive condominium development right there. And it kind of started a wave. Everybody realized what a booming success it was. So Plaza Midtown was actually the second kid on the block. They basically took all these houses around the Midtown area and just leveled them. They more or less just kind of took them and uh, you know just did what developers do when, when there's a single family house in the way. Sad to see, but this really is what kind of started this kind of wildfire effect to putting condos in the area. And soon after, we got all sorts of buildings. After people realized how big Plaza Midtown and how big Metropolis was, we started to get 1010 Midtown. Then we got Spire, Viewpoint, The Atlantic, we got 12th Centennial Park, Park, all of these kind of concrete glass styled uh, condos that you're seeing now that a lot of people have, they're kind of like the bread and butter of the condo market here in Midtown. Those all started around the same time and they all caught this kind of like mini kind of cash grab in the area and did fantastically well. And there's people that have been there ever since and they can tell you about these stories. And it's really kind of interesting to see. So this is really what's kind of started this Midtown craze. When these buildings all did well, people kind of calmed down for a while, but a few developments went here and there and there, and then everything just kind of accelerated now. So really the Midtown that we have today would not be here without any of these buildings. So it's quite interesting to actually see this and see just how much of a role this has played into what we have in the city today. We basically have a very, very nice urban core in Atlanta because of the success of these early buildings back in the early 2000s. And we really have to think, if you live in Midtown, you think it's a great area, or you've just been to the city lately and you think it's a lot better than it used to be maybe around the Olympics time, you have these buildings to essentially thank for all of that success that has ridden off the coattails of some of these earlier developments. Okay, guys, so let's get into the two bedroom that we're actually checking out today. Uh, fun little fact about Plaza Midtown, if you're looking at the North Tower, and you could basically just lay this over the East Tower as well and get the same thing, but if you're on the kind of uh, Spring Street side, which is the left side, it kind of messed me up there, uh, which is actually on the Western side versus West Beach Street was actually on the Eastern side. Um, if you're on the Western side or the left side of the building, you actually get these shorter, wider units. I actually really like that. I think it's pretty cool. And if you're on the right side of the building, you get these kind of longer, more narrow units, which I think is super interesting to see. I didn't really notice that. Um, but we're going to be checking out a two bedroom today. It's just above the common area level, the actual plaza level for the for the condominium. And it's, it's kind of amongst the trees. You kind of get a little bit of privacy in this, but you can still see out. You can still see the view. You can still see the common area. It's actually a really very pleasant unit. They have new floors. It's just a, it's just an overall, a very nice layout. So I hope you guys can like that. Enjoy this today. It's around $500,000, which is kind of around the middle that you're going to see for two bedrooms. I would say two bedrooms in Midtown, the kind of vast majority of them are going to be from 400 to $650,000. Anything less than 400, you're on the cheaper end and anything more than 650, really more than 600, 
Andre, you're on the pretty much much more expensive end of the market there for any kind of two bedroom. So this kind of happily sits right in the middle of there, right at $500,000. Great condo. And I hope you guys can check it out and like it. And if you guys want to know any more history lessons, be sure to contact me in the description below. I'll talk about a lot more because it's very interesting. Just calling around the buildings and seeing what all the neighbors who have been here for a long time have to say about the area. But guys, without further ado, let's get into the video.